truck is registered to a Bob Randolph of Asheville, North Carolina, but Bob Randolph doesn't exist. The address on the registration is a fake, too. Anything that points to a home address. NCIC hits on a truck. Not even a parking ticket. So we have nothing to narrow down our search. So the license plate's all we got. That's what we'll have to use. All right, hold up. I want to issue a bolo on the truck. We got to go wide on it. Federal agencies, but also local law enforcement, toll booths, harbors, junkyards, make it very clear they are not to approach. We cannot squander this lead, but we absolutely cannot have another cop blown to pieces. All right. Hey, you're a forensic lead. Um, how confident are we that this is the same guy that did Sandy Springs on the other side of the Atlanta? Beyond a reasonable doubt. And the guy in the Nissan pickup? When we find him, how do we know he's the bomber and not just a witness? If he's been handling TNT, the residue will be all over the steering wheel. Wipe it down with one of these. If the swab turns purple, you've got yourself a serial bomber. Work with Knox here to start prepping the charging documents. As soon as we get a purple swab, we formally charge this guy with all three bombs. Uh, four. Hey, what? What's oh, that? Up. You're probably not going to believe this. Top floor, that house yonder, ejected from the blast, we just found a steel directional plate. What does that mean? Well, it's virtually identical to the plate we found at Scent Bomb. This is a strong forensic signature. I think the guy you're hunting today is the same guy who bombed Centennial Olympic Park. 